Uh-uh, I ain't doing that twice. I made a mistake. That's why that thing happened like that right there. Cause that wasn't supposed to happen. Boom! Hey, y'all, it's the Michael Kai Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, y'all. It is Monday, Moon Talk, uh, the first day of the week. Some of y'all have a hard time with it. Be, oh, my Lord, it's Monday. I got to go to work. Let me tell you something. Sharks don't know it's Monday. They don't care. They get up. They swim around. They eating stuff. That it's just another day. You can make the day you want the day to be. I want my day to be positive, full of love, light, peace, and power. I look at myself this morning and say, "Dang, God sure took his time when he worked with you. Look what he done." Okay, so it's gonna be a beautiful, magical, powerful day because that's the way you want to see it. We will wake up this morning with an attitude of gratitude, number, love, peace, and power. We are going through our personal resurrection, okay? Because we had that resurrection yesterday that we celebrated, but. There's different ways to look at that resurrection, what the resurrection really is. Uh, as you know, it's also Easter. So that's why I had my my little Easter bunny up there. You know, I was I was Easter down. You know, I, I, I even went to Denny's and had me a cup of coffee as the bunny. And um, essentially, you, you just want to enjoy your life. You here. You here in life anyway. You might as well enjoy it. Let me go ahead and get started. Um, get out the way, Mr. Bunny. And let's see if my theme music will work this morning. Sometime it do. Sometime. Hey, y'all, it's a shot in the dark, but we take it like it is. Let's see. There it is. Come on, y'all. Good morning, Collier Clan. Good morning, family. What can I say? God woke us up on a beautiful day. He's generous, he's wonderful, he's kind and great. So let's show our Father we appreciate. God is good. God is good. God's good. Ba 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 do ba ba. Hey, good morning, family. What can I say? God woke us up on this beautiful day. He's generous, he's wonderful, he's kind and great. So let's show our father we appreciate. God's good. God's good. God's good. Ba 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 do ba ba. Woo. God's good. Bell solo. Ba 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 do ba. Woo woo woo. <laughs> Hey, having fun first thing in the morning. Lady, if you don't put that biscuit down, we're going to have trouble. Good morning, family. It's the Michael Kai Morning Show. This is where you come when you really want to get on your flow. You want to do your thing around here. Don't do nothing but laugh around here. This is where you come when you do your thing. When you really want to get up, start to swing. It's the Michael Kai Morning Show, y'all. Hey, the Michael Kai Morning Show, y'all. Tell your mama ain't going to be no drama. Okay, I ran out of words. All right, stop it. Stop it. Hey, y'all. It's the Michael Kai Morning Show. Today is Monday, um, April. I got a calendar over here. April 18th. 18? Yeah. April 18th, okay, just got over the hump there. What the, what that is? Yeah, April 18th is also episode 396. That's right, four more days, and we'll be celebrating. And Friday, our 400th episode, we're going to have some of the top artists we've had on the show. It's going to be Bud Nana. Tell your mama and Pookie and Run Run to get off the couch and make sure they're ready for that because we're going to be jamming. And speaking of jamming, I got to bring on my hostess with the most. Can't do this thing without her. She is fly, fly, fly funny. Smart, witty, quick, and cool as a fan. Get your hands together for one. The only uh, Miss Ashley Gale, the Persian Black Queen, is here. Woo! Woo! Good morning. Woo, 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 woo. How you doing this morning? I'm good. I got a little hangover. I got a little. What? What happened? You had a long I weekend? Like I was at the club last night. I, <laughs> I feel like I got my life together. You were at the club? Celebrating Easter at the club, child. I was, I was. It was the Versus Club, <laughs> and they had Mary, Mary, and BB and CC. Oh. And I had to up this whole dag on house, to high stepping, toe jumping, bopping, and dead. I forgot how much you could. It was a great one. Man, it was so good. <laughs> and you have been talking about it. You told me you was excited. I forgot oh it was on Easter, child. Let and me I was sitting in the house. I could have watched. Go ahead. Oh, my goodness. You missed it. It was so good. First of all, BB and CC took me back to, like, my childhood, like, with their songs. I'm like, I forgot how long I've been singing BB and CC Wines. Mm, okay. Like, like five or six. 
chick singing with them. And then Mary Mary brought it with all the tunes. And then I was thinking like, dang, they used to actually rock Mary Mary songs in the club, like for real. Uh, yes. Like for real, you used to be dancing to Jesus in the middle of the heathen nights. I'm telling you, it was great. <laughs> Wait, which one has their own show? Because one of them has a, a radio show in the morning. Could they I, do? I don't even know. But oh, you talking yeah. about she Mary Mary? Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. She called mm -hmm. too. It's a cold mm -hmm. show. It's got a real gospel slant and everything. And it was they were doing it out of the same offices that um Tom Joyner was doing his show. Oh, okay. They're coming out of Dallas and it's real fly. I can't think of it, but if, I don't know if any of the fans are watching and they know, they could throw it up and tell us about that. You yeah. know, I have to uh, say, uh, give a shout out to our girl, um, Bonnie Chambers. Bonnie, I, I, and I owe her apology. Bonnie is celebrating her first year anniversary of her talk show. You know, uh -huh. she was watching this show and got inspired and decided she's going to do her own talk show. And I had a photo of the flyer she had. I was supposed to go on and be a guest on the show with her. I, that wasn't it. Okay, you're right. I need my eyeball. Where are my eyeballs? Uh-oh, child, I didn't bring glasses down here. I'm at the room upstairs and get those in a minute. But let me see. If I look really close, I might be able to see her in there. I don't see her in there, what Bonnie. I'm a, huh? They, I'm a they answered your question. I'm looking for that. They answered what? your question. The Mary Mary sister that has her own show is Erica Campbell. That's Erica. That's the oldest Thank sister. Thank you, Erica mm -hmm. Campbell. And she is so fly. It's such a good show. Every morning. Uh, she's been on that show. Man, she's had it at least 10 years. She's had that show wow, for a while. really? Yeah. So I need to thank uh, Bonnie Chambers because Bonnie Chambers uh, did something I thought was really great. You know, from nowhere, mm -hmm. just off the top of her head, she decided to start a talk show. And she stuck with it. So a year in, I was supposed to come on, and I tried everything Friday to get on there. I don't know. Yeah, what I seen you. I seen you. you I see seen you. What a, I don't I know whose system you. is janky. Is it her? I don't know. I you know? said, you know what? Did somebody just need to either help Michael or help Bonnie? Because both of y'all. <laughs> I was on there for thirty minutes just trying to get on. I finally had to throw my hands up to it, but. I hope you know that I was there with you in spirit, Bonnie Chambers. You're a Kyle Claire member, and we respect that around here, okay? Easter. Mm -hmm. Wow! I would love me some Easter, okay? But before Easter even came, uh, I went out to the beach on Saturday. Uh, some of you guys know my little legacy. I on Venice Beach doing comedy. I was doing comedy on Venice Beach from 86 to 95. So five uh, for nine years, every Saturday and Sunday, I do five one-hour shows, right? So now we're coming back full circle so we can go back out and shoot it. I shot it in 91 as a 30 minute special for HBO. So now I'm gonna go back out and shoot it as an hour. And I'm, I'm calling it the king of Venice Beach, which I was and still am. But folks want a piece of the footage first. So I end up going out to Venice and I went out with my friend right here. This is my neighbor from right across the street, uh, Lupe. Her and her husband ain't even across the street no more. They went and bought a bigger house. So now they bought, I hate that they moved really cause they son would walk my dog. Now, my old buddy's up walking the dog every day. Yeah. Lupe is awesome. And she took these photos with this guy that I trained. You know, I taught him, you know, how to build his body up and everything, you know. Oh, um, yeah. now I, I, didn't you have something? Was it you or did he post something where he, do you have it? I don't want to say yeah, if I, well, I just, I, of him hold me up in the air. Yes. I don't know what that picture is, but we did have a picture where he had taken me and, and he had lifted me over his head in the bunny outfit two years right. ago. But I am bringing him on the show uh, this week just so we can take his shirt off, ladies. We bring him on. So well, take the shirt girls off. will be very happy. Won't you they call will, the planets? They <laughs> will be for real. I went, and so that was the beach was amazing. And while I was out there, you know our guy that we bring on, Darren Henson? He's all yeah. about Bitcoin, okay? Yep. I found this is a silk screen. Hey. Uh, it's a silk screen, uh, you know. The lost art. Well, you see in the background, the Federal Reserve Bank is over there. <laughs> you see here is the Bitcoin exchange is going uh, down. Bitcoin, and, and he's grabbing for the Bitcoin. And I thought about him when I saw this. So I'm going <laughs> to mail it to him. And the guy who the artist wrote and, and signed it and everything. So wow, he's going to be tough. getting that. Um, and you know, he did a, a TV show, a movie that me and you are both eating. That, that's right. Yeah, that is, that's right. And that's going to shoot third week in May. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, are you ready for that? I'm ready. Look at me. I'm just, you know, I'm getting my working out, my fitness. I'm getting ready. I've been working on my, you've been working on your lines, Michael. 
I ain't get no lines. Oh, you yeah. Script? Well, you're going to be so mad at me. I'm always putting my foot in my I do not believe you have the script. <laughs> oh, it's going to be some no, cussing. No, right because there. technically your character was a different person. It was a woman. And he's switching it specifically for Michael Collier. So, so I don't have to play it as a woman? No. I we, can. Don't I, no I am a we don't want no more Gail. We don't want Gail okay. to show up. Okay. No I got to show y'all my bunny celebration because people say, well, what? What is it? What? What does a, a a bunny have to do with Easter? What does that have to? Were there bunnies? What's I, people are confused about the whole thing? So, yeah. um, jump back bunny came out this weekend just to break it down once and for all. So let me let y'all check this out. Here we go, bro. Go ahead. Hi, folks. I'm jump back bunny, and I'm here to tell you the truth about the Bible and how come we are the reason for Easter. People keep saying, why bunnies there for Easter? What's a bunny got to do with Easter? Everything. Bunnies were tight with Jesus. But Paul, who wrote the book, didn't like us. Mm -mm. See, back then, there was a lot of bunnies. Not much, not many cows around, you know, not that many chickens, but bunnies was everywhere. When the Bible said be fruitful and multiply, we took it serious. As a result of that, Paul's dad made them eat bunny all the time. Bunny soup, hot and pepper, salad, bunny jello, peanut butter, and bunny. He got so tired of bunnies when it finally came time for him to write the book in the Bible. Cut us out. Cut us out. Who you think helped Jesus get out that cave? Oh, oh, you think Jesus pushed that big old boulder by himself? <laughs> okay, we know he could walk on water. Back then, everybody could. And he made a hell of a wine. But have you ever seen Jesus carry a box? Have you ever even seen him lift anything? The man weighed 113 pounds with all his robes. When it was time to come out that cave, bunnies was everywhere. We pushed that, pushed that boulder right out the way. But Paul, in his jealousy, cut us out, cut us out. That's because we have Peter Rabbit. We don't have Paul Rabbit. You ever heard of Paul Rabbit? No! We can't stand Paul because he's a cheater, a liar, and he cut us out. And somebody tell me, what do eggs have to do with Easter? I tell you what, the bunny didn't lay it. The bunny didn't lay it. Uh oh, I gotta go. This ain't my house. Think about that. So I hope that clears it up for everybody. Uh, I, you know, I haven't had any complaints about that. I sent that to every person I know. My minister, Reverend Michael Beckwith, he wrote back, funny, man. I sent it to the bishop. I sent it to everybody I know. I only had one person wrote me back and said, pagan. Call me a pagan. And I ain't never even been to Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, it's what kind of funny, though, Michael, because you have so many people, you know, that are, are supposed to be following this religion that says not to judge. and say it right there in the Bible, or else then, you be judged by the same measure. But yet they're the first to point fingers. Calm down, y'all. You know, it was just a joke. Take it. No one has a better sense of humor than Jesus. Jesus the okay. Christ. With all the mess he put up with, come on. If God don't have a good sense of humor, nobody does. All right, uh, we got to get started with this show. We got a lot more of a show for you today. We get started. It's time for our comedian, though. Our comedian is in the queue and ready to go because, you know, the only way we can do that is that we hit that button. We got a special button. Pow! We hit the button. It goes bing! And then all of a sudden, stuff happens and then boom! And just... All right, go ahead. You didn't say the magic word. What? You don't know the magic word? Uh-uh. Pow. Oh, okay. Boom. Is it, what's the magic word? <laughs> Ain't no magic word. I'm just messing with you. Hey, family, it's time for the Michael Cowyer Comedy Platform. We put on over 300 comedians, and they funny, too. Because you got to be funny here. Oh, you coming here, you going to be funny? <laughs> Whoa! It's going to be a long walk back to the car. Check them out. Michael Kaya Comedy Corner, we have comedy for you. You just throw what to do at the Michael Kaya Comedy Corner. Yay! All right, ladies, all the way from 
Love Africa. Kitten, Texas. He said that's southeast Texas, way south though. It's so south that the pump sunlight down there. Get your hands uh-huh. together for oh uh, she. Get your hands. No, wait, wait. Okay. He ain't from uh-huh. he ain't from Lubkin. Okay. I'd have mixed that up. The guy from Lubkin is Lamont Wilkins, who's doing spoken word. We got a heck of a show. Uh-huh. Spoken word. Yeah. Reverend right. Arlene is gonna do the prayer for us today instead of me. Uh-huh. Lisa Marie Williams got a song for you. Uh right. Dr. Joe Lee is coming to here talk about health. But right, right now, on our comedy corner is a young lady named Jal Judah. Jal Judah! <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You had it right. I am from Lufkin. So I, I did have it right. Okay, from Lufkin, Texas, southeast Texas, right? Yep. So far south at the pump sunlight. Yes. Look, look, so look, so far south, you will see somebody tie their horse up at the gas pump. Whoa! Oh, like <laughs> Welcome to the show. Oh, oh, don't disappear now. Where is she going? There we go. She, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Miss Jow Judah. What you got? Well, a lot of stuff has happened since the last time I was here, y'all. But um, let me tell you something. People give me advice all the time, and I try to follow it. But one piece of advice people gave me that I wish I would have took more serious is being a parent is hard. Mm-hmm. People tell me, look, it wasn't the diapers. It wasn't the late nights. It wasn't my baby pooping up her back for the first time. It didn't get hard until she got in school and I started having to help her with homework. <laughs> you know, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not dumb. It wasn't even the math or the science that was messing me up. Mm. It was art class. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, hear me out. Hear me out. When we were kids, we made stuff out of popsicle sticks and cotton balls, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not these kids. Every time my daughter came home from school, she had a farm talking about, can you send some beans? Can you send some rice? Can you send some Cheerios? First of all, ma'am, if you don't hit me on the seventh when I'm getting food stamps, you're not getting none of that. <laughs> <laughs> so one time for Mother's Day, my daughter went to school and y'all, she made me this cute little picture out of jelly beans. It was a flower with a heart on it, right? And she was so proud of it. She showed everybody. She showed the kids on the bus. She showed the bus driver. She showed the neighbor that's supposed to stay 500 yards away from kids. She was showing (laughs) everybody. (laughs) And so when she got home, she was like, mama, put it on the refrigerator. And you know, for a kid, that's like the hall of fame, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the bad thing about it at the time, we lived in the projects. And the projects Mm -hmm. has three things. Crackheads, rats, and roaches. Can you guess which one we had in our apartment? Which one? Roaches. Oh, okay. I hate them. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it on the refrigerator while she woke. But as soon as she go to sleep, this got to go. You can't just have open food products in a black woman's house. <laughs> and y'all, I put her to bed and I fell asleep too because I'm over 30. That's what I do. <laughs> and I woke up and I went in the kitchen and I turned on the light. And y'all, the picture wasn't even on the refrigerator no more. Uh uh-uh. uh, the room. I was like, well, well, I don't know. I was like, well, maybe she put it in her bed because you know that's what four year olds do. You know, they they move stuff around. So it wasn't in her room. It wasn't in my room. It wasn't in the living room. I turned on the back light, and y'all, the rats and the roaches was fighting over the picture. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look, everything happens for a reason. So there was an issue where my food stamps got cut off, and I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. Mm. But my daughter happened to come home from school with a macaroni picture frame. <laughs> 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 I'm like, you know what? Won't he do it, y'all? I put her in the bathtub and I put all the done dishwashing liquid and all the Barbies in there so I could distract them. You know, you got to distract them. Uh-huh. And while she was in there, I put that water on a boil and I scraped that whole picture frame off in that pot and threw a little Velveeta cheese in there. And baby, we had dinner. <laughs> the school hate me now because I be sending suggestions. I'm like, you ever thought about making maracas out of red beans and rice or some neck bone necklaces? You know, just like real neck bones. And, um, that's why I got blocked from calling the school because that teacher does not like me anymore. <laughs> hey, as a single parent, you gotta make do. You gotta make do. <laughs> well, Thank God, God, God. This is great. Thank you, 
Y'all, Judah dropped in, y'all. Yeah. I'm relating to everything you're saying, too, girl. We had roaches. You know, roaches like bad kids. You know, they only come out when you got company walking all on the ceiling doing acrobatics. You know? Look, and even if you clean, if your neighbor's dirty, the roach is going to know, oh, her house clean. Let's go oh. over here and see what's going on. Yeah, like the neighbor moved and roaches start showing up all over the apartment complex. Like everybody, I was like, what in the world? Like, was she born the roaches? I, I would tell you the truth. I was nervous. I thought you was gonna say the crackhead that bust in the window and took the I, you know, that's what I thought. Daisy no, the crackhead the crack is scared of rats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we why you can say we, Michael. <laughs> Hey, you know, once you're an addict, you're always an addict. I'm just not a practicing addict. Oh, yeah. 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 So you were fantastic, young lady. Come on, Thank give it up right now. But John, you know, come in, put the love on the consumer. Thank you. Tell people where they can find you, young lady. Um, Instagram, I am Jal Judah. Facebook, Jal Judah D. Um, just Google me. I'm the only Jal Judah. And if you see yeah. anybody else in they playing, let me know because that's that's my name. There it is. God bless you and thank you for coming. Hey. Give us a uh, woo 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 for you. Go, woo, go, go. Woo woo woo. Now, now I gotta go cook breakfast for this child because she is up. I hear her. <laughs> Maybe you can borrow the frame and add some macaroni to it. Yeah. She won't make me no more. Uh, she won't make you no more. Thank you, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. That was Jow Judah right here on the Mike Tight Morning Show. First thing in the morning with a little humor. You know, I went to church uh, yesterday. I was mm -hmm. out, you know, I live out here in Antelope Valley. And I, I didn't know the churches. You know, I wanted to go in a building. My church is Agape uh, International uh, Center of Faith, Reverend mm -hmm. Michael Nar Beckwith. Uh, but I wanted to go in a physical church out here. I wasn't driving in the city. I wanted to go in the building. And I just started calling around. And I found a church called Antelope Valley Christian Center. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's the senior pastor right there. This is the gentleman here who actually is the pastor, uh, the message pastor, uh, pastor Tommy. I never heard of a pastor, Tommy, but his message was really great. And he did a thing about the coming out of the cave, the whole thing about the resurrection and how you come out. And what did the coming out of the cave mean? He had pointed out that, uh, and I don't have my glasses. Let me see if I got the right one. Yeah, he had made a cave on the stage out of this brown construction paper. Uh -huh. And in there, he had all kind of stuff. He had a football, he had basketball, he had boxes of things. And he came out with this suit. He walked in, he brought a suit out, and he came out and he showed this suit. And, I, and then he gave the suit to somebody who could fit it in the audience. But he was talking about, what he was really talking about was uh, the cave. For him, the analogy he made was the angels moved the boulder, but Jesus came out on his own. He walked out on his own. So he was like, well, what cave do you have in your life and what things do you have in your cave? What things that you need to bring out? Things that you know are there, but you aren't moving forward, you know? And it was a really great analogy. So he came out with football and he talked about that. He came out with a basketball, brought a person up, then he brought a suit. But it was really just to show the idea that you have things in there. You have pain in there. You have misery in there. You have issues you want to clean up in there. How do you resurrect yourself? During this time, I, I was telling people, you want to resurrect your joy, man. You know, you want to make sure that you hit the center of that joy. It's very, very important. So I grabbed the book on, uh, that this guy came on our show this Friday. You know, his name is Monk Coleman. And I have to do this read. Give me one second, baby. I had to do this read on, on this principle. I cannot believe I didn't bring glasses. Okay. We're going to make it work. All right. Um. The, the principle is gratitude. So the first quote is, every moment, a million miracles are happening around you. A flower blossoming, a bird tweeting, a bee humming, a rain drop falling, a snowflake waffling uh, along with the clear evening air. There's magic everywhere. If you learn how to love it, life is nothing short than a daily miracle. So it really comes down to how you look at things. Also, um, William Arthur Ward says, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. You know, so I always talk on this show about the importance of, of walking around with an attitude of gratitude. And when you know you have something and you acknowledge it, the universe continues to make that larger and larger. So here's the principle of gratitude. Have you ever gotten the, if you don't like it, I'll take it back. 
Have you, have you ever had that happen to you? Uh, my mother often put me in check. How quickly some things come and go. That was a life lesson. Thanks, Mom. When you're grateful for what you have, you end up with more. The opposite is the truth as well. We all have witnessed a person who has it all but never has enough. This person typically lacks a, a level of gratitude, likely with a scarcity mindset. They cling to things that don't matter, yet they're still unhappy. Uh, 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 Bob Marley said, I know a lot of poor people, and some of them so poor, all they have is money. Whew, let that sit in. The compelling part, uh, people with few possessions can lead to a more abundant life merely due to mindset. It's the way you look at it, the way you think about it. With an understanding that life itself is a gift, breath, family, love, and ability, we have everything we need. Gratitude comes down to feeling the thorn in the rose and still recognizing its beauty, seeing the pain and saying thank you, recognizing that each step in your path shapes you and allows you to realize your core, which is love. Gratitude is losing the victim mentality of why me and shifting to use me. Okay, I just want to get that out today. Hey, man, it's resurrection time. It ain't in just because uh, yesterday was Easter. We are continuing to unfold into our greater selves, or at least we should be. And if you're not, well, shame on you, because that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my thing. Me and these single seniors out here, we about to make it happen, Captain. Come on back, young lady, because now, thank you. You at your mama's house? I'm at my mama's house. Oh, are we going to meet your mother? My mom is resting right now. She's... Okay, right now. But <laughs> can you bring her on one day? We want to meet your mom. I'll, I'll see if she'll come on for my birthday. Oh, that is cool. And you know, the, the guy who's doing a spoken word today, it's his birthday today. His 45th oh. birthday. 45 years old. He don't look a day over 44. Okay. <laughs> Without uh, any further ado, let's bring on this wonderful vocalist that uh, she sent me a tape. I have her down as a shot in the dark, but she really ain't a shot in the dark. Um, oh, the shirt. All right. This is just one of the many items from a Black-owned bookstore in Fort Worth, Texas, that we've sent several items out to people. Bonnie, in fact, won this item from the store, which is called Monopoly. It's a Black version, Ebonopoly. You know, but if you go to this store, I mean, you're going to be blown away. It's called The Dock. It's right outside <laughs> Fort Worth. And this shirt is just one of the items. This week, we're giving away two more items from that store. And hopefully before the week is over, we'll go live from that store and they'll show us all the different things that's going on. Right. But this young lady, oh my goodness, she opened her mouth up and she can sing. Okay, get your hands together. She's in Phoenix, Texas right now, but she's traveling all over the place, Ashley. I don't know why she traveling. I think somebody chasing her. She's running for the police or something. I don't know. Anyway, get your hands together for Miss Lisa Marie Williams. Lisa Marie Williams! Good morning. What happened? what happened, Lisa? You cut somebody? You want to run? Hey, I'm running. I'm running. They they trying to catch me. They not going to Well, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so glad to be here with you guys today. We're glad to have you here. And while we have 70 people watching, could y'all please hit that like button, please? Like, Pow! Like Yari shine in the morning. Yari healing in the morning. So much love in the morning. There is music in the morning. There is joy in the morning. There is healing in the morning. Lisa, I did not hit yeah. that button. That was Ashley hit that dog <laughs> button. And she did a fine job. You said pow, and I thought that was the secret word. <laughs> I've got to figure out what the secret word is. Lisa, where, where, where are you from? I know you're in Phoenix, but where are you from? I am actually originally from Chicago. I'm a Chicago native. South yes. Side, what part? Yeah, 79th and Carpenter. So, yeah. so I grew up on 113th and Carpenter, 113th, okay. South. Come on with your bad self. Well, yes. <laughs> what are you singing for us today? Um, the song I just released is called Only You, um, and it's all over the all the digital platforms under Lisa Marie Williams. It's, it's amazing. It's been on radio shows. It's overseas. It's worldwide. It's everywhere. Yes. Well, and I, I and uh, also Jerry Smoot produced it. Oh. I am. I'm excited to hear it. I'm gonna get out your way 
Go ahead and do your thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lisa Marie Williams. Wake up in the morning Mm -hmm. With you on my mind uh, Wondering just how you're uh, Spending your time You hold my heart so tenderly In your hand I feel so safe with you. Mm -hmm. Just trying to understand. How did you get so close? Mm -hmm. And deep inside my soul. I, I lay here just craving you. Wishing you take hold, oh, 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 yeah, 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 mm, yeah, 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 you hold my heart so tenderly in your hands. I feel so safe with you. Just, just trying to understand. How did you get so close? Mm -hmm. And deep inside my soul, I I lay here just craving you, wishing you take hold. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> I'm just craving you right now. <laughs> Come a little closer. Yes. Right there. Right there. Yes.
Come on, y'all. Give it up right now. Lisa Marie Williams in the house. This morning, you better put that moan on it. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, you look very bubbling them on that for a minute now. I need somebody to dance with right there. I'm over here dancing with myself. Oh, baby. Thank you. That is Thank wonderful. You. How long you been singing? Forever. Forever. Really? Started yes. with church and everything? Antioch Baptist Church is where I first started singing. Yes, in the come choir. On. Come on, yeah. somebody. You know, <laughs> some of the best singers on this planet come right from church. They started church. Tell people how they can find you. So on the digital music platforms, I'm under Lisa Marie Williams. Facebook, Lisa Marie Sings. And Instagram, Lisa Marie Sings for you. You're fabulous. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good time. Yes, I did. This was amazing. I appreciate you guys so much. You made my entire year. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Give up that W and a woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Come on, y'all. Give it up, Lisa Marie Williams, right here on the Mike Tyler Morning Show. All right, y'all. Time for prayer. We got to get our prayer in. Uh, Most important part of the day for me is when we get to commune with the higher source, with the higher spirit. A lot of times I come on and do the prayer. I enjoy doing the prayer. I usually just be wearing people out with the chair, the, the prayer of Jabez. But there's more prayers than that, you know. Uh, today I'm very fortunate. We're very fortunate to have one of my great friends and an awesome prayer warrior who actually is a practitioner at my church, the great uh, Agape International Center of Faith. Her name is Reverend Arlene full lotus come on y'all show your love she's right here woo! 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 good morning Reverend Arlene how are you life is good I'm grateful to be here with you this morning shy town in the house shy town I, I grew up in Chicago where at where at well, my father, my family migrated from Jamaica. They came to Chicago, south side of Chicago, oh, 8,500 south. So what part? 55? 8,500 south. 8,500 south. Yeah. Wow, you out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're yeah. wearing my favorite colors, red and black. Thank you for saying yes this morning. This is early to ask anybody to get up. So thank you for I'm coming. I'm up at five. I'm good. Oh, yay. I'm up at 530. You know, I almost felt like you nudged me. Oh, girl, wait, let me sleep a little longer. Okay. I'm single, so I can say stuff like that. Okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. So look, okay. let me get out your way and let you do your thing. Well, you mentioned the prayer of Jabez. My grandfather's name was Jabez, is Jabez. He wrote the prayer? He wrote at 102. And this is the book, The Prayer of Jabez. It's a reminder of my grandfather. So I love yeah. that book and why it's so important to me is it doesn't just say the prayer, but it breaks down what the prayer means and why that encompasses everything in that one sentence, that long one prayer. It's a short prayer with five sentences, six sentences, but it encompasses everything you need to get your day started. So I'm glad you got the book. Woo, yeah. woo, woo. Beautiful, beautiful. And love to your grandfather. Grand yes, Amen. my grandfather, feeling his energy of the ancestors right now. Thank you. Come on, play. All right. So I'm just so grateful to be here with everyone in this now moment. So I will be calling out a few names for the high, our higher power, God, Spirit, Allah, Yahweh. As many of you may know, the Lent season and Ramadan season were both uh, at the same time within two weeks. So I just wanted to bring that to our attention because it reminds me of our oneness, that we're all one in this thing called life and that we were created from the same source. And the main cause of our suffering is separation. Racism is separation. Ageism is separation. Sexism is separation. Separating ourselves in our minds, thinking you, God out there, higher power is separate that is the source of our separatism. So I'm acknowledging that this presence and power is within. Right where we are, the fullness of our creator is. Let us take a moment and turn inward. Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit, Jehovah, Yahweh, Allah, ultimate intelligence, divine wisdom, this presence and this power is everywhere evenly present. This presence and this power is life itself. It is the living breath that we're breathing right now. God is, we are, we are, God is. I'm knowing that the divine essence of love is everywhere. There is no spot where God is not. 
The presence of God is active and alive and well right where I am right now and right where each one of you is in this moment. The presence of God is fully available as your life. God is life. You are life. God is your life and the living breath, the rucha, the rucha, the breath of who you are, the original word for breath, God. God is your life. And so we bless this sacred moment knowing that we are carried through this day and that we have been given our daily bread. Let us sup at the table of the Most High God. Let us resurrect ourselves into our higher self. Who are we? We are spiritual beings in the human condition. Let us live from the divinity of who we are this day. Let us walk and as we recognize God as love, as peace, as joy, as harmony, as forgiveness, as compassion, as open-heartedness, we get to live and represent God as our life. And so we let go in this moment. We let go. We let God. We allow. We say yes to living in our magnificence as emanations of the Most High. I release this word onto the law with gratitude and thankfulness, knowing that life is truly good as you. And I let it be. It is done. It is done. It is done. And so it is. So it amen is. and amen. Ashe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I so appreciate powerful. you, Michael Koya. You're the best. Mm -hmm. I thank love you. your life. I love how you love life. Thank you. And I appreciate you. I appreciate that prayer and how deep it goes and how far out it reaches, you know, because uh, I just think that everything is a culmination of the one and there's one God and we get to that God the way we get to the God. There's a million paths, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's God and God is love. And we experience that by how we live and how we share with other people. And thank you for putting it down like you put it down today. Woo, woo, woo. My Tell honor. Tell they can find you, Reverend Arlene. Well, I'm on Facebook tonight, Monday night. I'll be on, I do meditation every Monday night as a gift to the world. Rev Arlene Cecilia Hilton on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm also on YouTube, Rev Arlene One, the number one. And yeah, those are two ways that they can capture me. I've been fasting for the past uh, Lent season and continuing with Ramadan. And hey, more information. You can also go to I'mKeepingTrue.com. I'm true.com tells you about my fasting program. So I love that. Well, God bless you real good. Thank you for wearing my favorite colors. What were you about to Thank say? You. I'm ready for you the wolf. I didn't want to interrupt none of that. I'm ready. Ready because she is, she is on it. I, I just wanted to let her speak and have all the space she needed to say what needed to be said because I can feel the energy on you. So thank you. I, just I love you, Reverend you. Arlene. Leave us with a woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Give it up, y'all, to Reverend Arlene. Full Lotus right here at my time on the show early in the morning with love and light. Wait a minute. So did you hear the story this weekend, the big news, that two women got pregnant in prison by a transgendered woman? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute, Michael. It's like the biggest news of the week. You can, <laughs> hey, y'all, I ain't making this up. And which I wait, think, I wait, think that's wait. pretty clever. Actually. No, how do you actually call your, how are you classified a transgender, a, a trans? But she convinced them that she was a woman, a transgendered woman. So they housed her with the other women. But and I two women got pregnant by her. I, I thought you couldn't have the. I thought when you was a trans, well, you didn't. All have of them the, don't have the. All of them don't have the full operation. But they still consider trans. Yeah, yeah. There's a pre-op and a mm -hmm. post-op trans, and I guess this one Maybe, came with all well, the equipment. Well, you never know. Maybe there was, um, you know, an ha a harassment situation. It might not have been, uh, you know, voluntary. So you never know. I don't know. I don't know. Did, I don't it know was two of them and one of, and two of them, one of her. How, how you say that? I don't know. Two of hers. One All of I them. know is I think it's very clever on the, on the transgender person's part. I mean, so you you can't really hook up with a woman then. 
you become a woman and get put in a prison with women, and now you get all the women you want. Next thing you know, two women are pregnant by a transgender. I can't. It just blows my mind that stuff like that is real. That is I so real. Like, you know what else is real? What it else is real is the fact that women are and have not been held accountable for rape with men. So I don't know what the story is. I got to read this story because some of these women are vicious. And they're monsters just like men are. So I don't know. Let let me not speak on it yet. But I was real confused about the the trans transgender part of it. I didn't I didn't know you could still have certain pieces and and be considered that. I didn't know. Well, so well, some of us feel Sabrina said disgusting. You know, um, I say life. Uh, you just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know what people gonna do or how they gonna do it. You know. Um, but I, I just know. know that it knocked me out because that's not something I could even wrap my head around. I couldn't I couldn't imagine that that could happen, but it's like the biggest news of the week. So y'all yeah. go figure. I, don't know, Mike, I, got bigger news. I think I might have bigger news. You got bigger news? What you got? I think I got bigger news. You know, um, I'm, I'm going to show you this because, you know, they under some hot fire right now. But they, they took the time to uh bring them into a connection with easter so i just want to share with somebody now i made sure i cut it to where you can't see who shared it but you could tell it wasn't me so here's a piece of a piece of uh connection with can you see it okay yeah the easter bunny i see you got that glare on it from the tv hold on I see jada's see. face what's on her head it's a piece That's of an egg. <laughs> What? Uh, I, I, thought uh, it was, I thought it was pretty i thought it was pretty creative let me i had to brighten it for y'all there you go look there y'all oh see my, oh they, my goodness they, happy they said, easter from the smiths how about that is my I idea bet you they didn't put that together i bet you they did no they i don't did. think they got that kind of sense to you but look at this look at this ridiculousness how about this as a family photo <laughs> Oh my goodness, Jesus! With the, you know what? I actually had a photo I need to put up too. Now that you mentioned that, um, one of my friends, I did a movie like a thousand years ago called uh, "The Long Shots" uh -huh. with Kiki Palmer. She was fourteen at the time, yeah. and she played a little girl who um, she played a little girl who joined the football team. True story in Chicago, Southside Chicago. She joined the little league football mm -hmm. and took them all the way to the championship. Yeah. She, story. she played her ice cube hired me for that and i got that gig as a mistake as a fluke because they were given the part to george wallace but george wallace had a show in vegas he fell on the stage and broke his ankle when they were supposed to shoot the next day so they called me in new york and just gave me the part okay so wow. i was doing that and along the way i met this wonderful woman named charlie and i haven't seen charlie since then and I talked to her yesterday on Easter. And so she sent me a picture of her and her daughter, who looks like a mini me. Look at them. Oh, if, if that picture oh. doesn't represent uh, Easter, let's step off one second. Look. I don't know what does. And that That's child beautiful. looks exactly like her. Yeah. That is her mini me. I love mini me for real. I love Easter because it's just another, another time to celebrate something. I'm just big on celebrating stuff. You know, life is here for us to dance and celebrate. You're going to be able to find a million reasons to complain, you yeah. know, but to be able to get up and celebrate is a is a great, great thing. And you got people out there too who are going to try to hold you back when you're trying to do stuff. You're going to have enemies, but one minister was preaching, and I really love what he was talking about, about how important your enemies are. You need your enemies. You need some people out there. Somebody, I have a quote on my wall upstairs that said, they're not proud of you. They just shocked and surprised that you still keep on going. <laughs> you be proud of you. Look at what this minister said about having enemies. Enemies believe in you more than your friends do. 
That's why they always lying on you. That's why they always got your name in their mouth. That's why they always trying to take you out. That's why they always trying to get you fired. Your enemies become your footstools. If you don't have enough enemy, you don't have enough steps. If you don't have enough enemies, you'll never reach your destiny. I need you to get home and print out some enemy applications. Enemies make you cross T's. Enemies make you dot I's. Enemies make you watch your back and don't make mistakes. Enemies make sure you don't befriend the wrong people. Enemies make sure you don't just let anybody inside of your house. Enemy make sure you just don't let anybody babysit your kids. I need somebody to shout hallelujah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm trying to bring you on and you try to bring you on. I love that because the enemies are the ones that keep you sharp. The people who are out there trying to stab you every chance you get, make you duck and dodge, keep you on your feet, pop, 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 pop. But it's another know, beautiful like, day. Huh? I feel like I feel like with with uh, enemies, you don't have to try to find them. As long as you keep pushing forward and you keep elevating and you keep persevering and you stay diligent to what it is that you want to do for you, they going to come out the woodworks. Because they going to they, they, be there. So it's like, you know what? And, and people don't realize even speaking negative is speaking life into someone else's existence. So even when you're talking bad, the universe doesn't understand the negativity of it. So it's like you just feeding that person more life, more mm. life, more life and energy. So you got to be real careful about putting other people's name in your mouth. Put, put your is. name in your mouth. How about that? Well, enough on enemies. Let's talk about friends. I have a friend about to come on right now, you know. Um, and Huh? You know You one of my best friends. I is your friend, Mike. Well, you would be a terrible enemy. <laughs> but I got I got a friend that I've been knowing for almost 20 years. 17 years ago, he gave me some of these. You know what those are? And that's his picture right there on the label. And what these are are mustard seeds. So if I ground this up. I could put this on a hot dog, you know, because I like a lot of mustard. No, these are mustard seeds that have so many health properties. This one says this one helps diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, tumors, and weight. It deals with, it's like almost a cure-all because nature has everything you need right Give there. Give me some of them. Give me some of them. I'm, I'm going to take some. Well, we need to find out more about him, too, because he also gave me the black seed oil. And this is that real. Look how black that black seed. Yeah, get a spoon, Michael. I want to see what it look like. Have you taken it yet today? No, I told him I'm going to take it on air. Let so me see gonna, it. Let me see he, it. He's going to come on right now. I think we'll take three tablespoons. But what if it's terrible? I just. Just hold your hold your nose. You you survived cocaine. Okay. You all right? Let's get him on here. I ain't fear. Let's get him on here. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the prophet. And he is the food prophet, Dr. Joe Lee. Come on, y'all. Dr. Joe Lee. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, King? <laughs> Amazing, King. How are you? It was so good to see you on Venice yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? It was Saturday. Saturday, yeah. It was good to see you come up and bring that love, brother. And you walk right up and bless me with these natural supplements. These are natural herbs. No drugs or nothing or any. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. No, Tell me no. about the black seed oil. Oh, okay. First of all, I want to say I was just so happy to see you, King, that you, uh, it's been 17 years since I've seen you and I love you, your family, love just your son, everybody. Okay. But uh, my phone wait, may be going out on charge because I've been holding a while, so I'm going to talk real fast. All right. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I'm God's healer. God uses my hands more than anybody on the planet Earth to do miracles. My name is Prophet Dr. Jolly Harris, okay? The international food prophet. That black seed oil I gave you, that black seed oil does about a thousand things. But first thing I want the world to know is people are taking black seed oil and their oil is not black. Their oil is dark brown. They're getting it from a cumin seed. They're not getting this real black seed oil that you got here that I took to Dubai. I took to Saudi Arabia. I took this to Bahrain. The black seed oil, you turn this bottle upside down, shake it till it's totally loose on the bottle, and then you drink one to three tablespoons a day. Black seed oil does herpes. It does AIDS. It does blood pressure. It does cholesterol, cholesterol, people with hypertension problems. It helps people that cannot walk. A lot of people can't walk. I, number one, started using black seed oil to help people that cannot poop. I want the world to know 65,000 people die a year because they cannot 
poop. This is very. I said that colon is blocked. Too much junk in the trunk. So this black seed oil does a lot of things. It also helps people with ADD, ADHD, all those types of things. It helps with seizures and blood clots to the brain. It also helps with maggots, worms, and parasites. You would be shocked how many women have maggots, worms, and parasites, and they're trying to have babies. You would be shocked how many women have cysts and fibroids that are shutting down the black women from having babies. This black seed oil will help that situation okay people don't know that at least 70 percent of our black women under 40 years of age when they go to have a baby they take a chance on risking their life black seed oil i drink a tablespoon two or three i also put it on my soup my salad my beans i use it every day like you use ketchup i use black seed oil yes yes Black man ain't black unless he got some black food in him. Somebody tell me how <laughs> that mustard seed. Whatever you do, don't go buy these seeds in the store. Don't go buy these seeds from a health food store or any place like that because Monsanto has a monitorium on these seeds. They're giving you cancer with these seeds, so be careful. The mustard seed is from the Bible, Mark chapter 4, okay? It heals everything, blood pressure, cholesterol. It's number one for bones. If you got somebody in your family and they're a senior citizen and they're over 70. Give them these seeds because seniors start dying when they hit the ground, okay? People don't know this. When they fall, they have breaks and a lot of them die. My oldest person that comes to me, I love her more than anyone. Miss Frances started coming to me at 91 years old because blood was shooting up and down her arm and the doctors couldn't help her. But Miss Frances, she came to me. I gave her some uh, uh, black seed oil. I gave her our green tea. We have our green tea. And I gave her what's called our cancer tea. She drank these things and licked them and it opened up her arteries. Miss Francis is now 104 years old. Oh, the oldest I'm helping is 104. I'm teaching women what no doctor's going to teach you. No doctor this, doctor that, doctor Rab, doctor this, doctor Oz, doctor nobody is going to teach you how to clean your vagina correctly. Nobody's going to tell you that under your breast, under this cup line, you see right here, women have a smile line under their breast. They have to clean in that breast line with this oil, the anointed oil that we use. Because women on the tip of their nipples, there's an odor. Under their breast cup line is an odor. In their armpit, there's an odor. In their vaginal, there's an odor. So what doctor is going to teach you how to clean your vaginal, how to clean your butt crack, how to clean your liver, how to clean your navel? Nobody's going to teach a man how to clean his penis and his balls. Hey! Dr. Job, I'm saying this, this is a family out. show. Belongs to God. Your body belongs to God. It does not belong to you. Everything I just said to you, I say in church because we live in a bald body, in a bald time, in a bald place. And I tell the preachers, you know what? This is straight from the book. These seeds are from Genesis 1:29. So we help women that have fibroid tumors. We help women that are urinating on themselves. We help women that have hysterectomy problems. You'd be shocked at how many black women are having hysterectomy problems because the hot sauce, the black pepper, all of this hot, spicy stuff, all of this caliente stuff is taking out the black race. 20 years from now, we won't have any black people because our black women are being burnt out from the insides. You understand? This was called placenta inside that holds the baby inside. That placenta, somebody tell these 17 year old girls to start eating right. They take bad food into our stores, garbage into our stores. They're feeding the black neighborhood garbage garbage and that's what we're eating and that's why the women are coming up with these pregnancies okay with all these problems 60 percent chance the woman gonna die 40 percent the chance the baby gonna die i'm sick of hearing these stories okay we gotta clean up our act so i want the women to know i'm gonna calm down just a little bit 818-983-7473 excuse me for blasting out but easter god i have to release the world that our people are done Hold up. Say the number again. Say the number again. 818 983 7473. I want to go to Charlie Harris. Okay, hold on. You got you got a moment. Hold up. I wanna I wanna uh I wanna go to some of the comments. Uh yeah. one lady named Nurse Virgie says, I had a tumor three centimeters. Somebody just erased it. I had it up. What happened? I, I'm not near Sorry the button. About that. We're okay. All right. Um, let me go back and get this. Uh, get la, 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 la. I apologize. No problem, no problem, baby. Uh, okay. I, 
I am going to choke you so much when I get to Florida. Okay, I had a tumor three centimeters torn out of my chest. The doctor urged me to cut my breast off and take. I don't know what she said, but she said, I said, no, two years cancer free, natural is the best. So she said she went natural instead of with medications. And she's That's still alive from someone says sunflower power uh, is, is, is good. Sunflower power. I haven't heard of that. Um, uh, uh, Gail, he is speaking the truth. A lot yeah. of people are saying that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I had to oh, uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Nurse Virgie says she, oh, they was trying to get her to take chemo. She was saying, but she would not take chemo. She said no. And Can now I say chemo to the public? The public needs to understand what chemo is. Chemo is exactly rat poison. Chemo and radiation are exact ingredients of rat poison. And so when you go and see a doctor, I tell anyone that's going to a doctor, ask the doctor a yes or no question. Does chemo grow more? cancer cells and ask them does radiation grow more cancer cells ask the doctor for a yes or no question women please please do not do these mammograms 70 percent of the women i help with cancer say they got cancer right after their mammograms they're also pap smear let me give you an example here they will pap smear a girl out of compton and this girl young lady she could be 15 years old maybe she don't even have enough money for a bus pass but guess what they will pap smear her and give her cancer and six months later they'll call her back in and check her a again and when they check her they tell her they'll have cancer this girl has no money in her pocket but they will give her cancer and get 15 million dollars out of her in four states cancer this is a game my phone is going low right now on power so i'm gonna a say, I got people say that a lot of people say what you're saying to that and and so does uh dr lamont i mean dr lamar uh lamar price says the same thing that it's a money game, the whole medical profession, five reasons, M-O-N-E-Y, for doing yeah. medicine. And one of the things you said, which is so true, is they will give you stuff to deaden the pain. But yeah. you ain't deaden the pain. The yeah. pain is the body's alarm clock to tell yeah. you something's wrong. So you don't want right. to cut off the alarm. You want to fix the thing. Yeah. But the medical profession will keep giving you more and more drugs because they're yeah. selling you those. And there'll be higher and higher doses because your body will uh, be able to take it until your body can't take no more. And then yeah. they'll say, well, you should probably get your, your things in order. So I know that there's truth in what yeah. you're saying, brother. I, I so just want to put your number up one more time. Go ahead. Wrap it up. Be ahead, before my, before this cuts off on of me, because my phone's going to die out, I want people to know I'm in Jolie, J-O-L-I-E, 7169, J-O-L-I-E, 7169. That's my Instagram. And The Food Prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, The Food Prophet on YouTube, The Food Prophet on TikTok, The Food Prophet on Twitter, okay? And also, Whoa, I'm Mary Smith, I'm I know Christina. Go ahead, say that again. Christina woke up in my hand. She was in a coma for six months. I didn't wake her up. God woke her up. Also, DMX woke up in my hands. DMX, I was with him the last 48 hours of his life. Yes, and he was not doing well, was not commanding, was not responding to anything. But 20 minutes later, he was doing fine. The hospital kicked me out there in White Plains, New York, for helping DMX. They called the paddy wagons on me the second day. They wanted him dead. All right, we out of time, and you're amazing. Your energy is crazy good. And I got your phone number up there right now, 818-983-7473. That's it, sir. So, Eight folks, one. please call and get detail. I'm sorry we only have seven minutes, bro. I told you when you came on, you ain't going to get all your stuff in in those seven minutes now. <laughs> yeah. But you got a lot in, and a lot of people say yes Tell the truth and shame the devil. Yeah. And then Rosemary Smith said, you know, you could also use hot Cheetos. Um, no. Okay, no. anyway. <laughs> we love your black Puerto Rican princess there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Your black Persian princess, I'm sorry. Black Persian princess. We, host, we love your host. Well, God bless you, brother. And love thank you, you for coming on this show. We have a tradition here. We end it with a W, and we say, woo, woo, woo. Can you give us a woo, woo, woo? Woo, woo, woo to the most high. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, King. That's okay. Prophet Dr. Jolie, the food prophet right there, y'all. Thank you, man. And I'm going to, hey, and today I'm taking both of these today, uh, sir, because I do want to work, but he looked at me.
for one moment and said, look like I'm starting to get cataracts. And I said, I don't, I don't drive a Cadillac. I have a Mercedes and I have a Bentley, but I ain't got... No, anyway, no, he says he could see cataracts starting in my eyes. So now I'm going to actually get that check. Thank you, Doc. I'm checking that out. Uh, Make sure I am going to check it out. Uh, and you said that this will help. He said that this will actually help clear it up and a, a couple more things that he had. But I'm down with cut natural. The dairy, cut the dairy out of your diet because that creates... The cataracts on the eyes. I'm just saying. And you're yep. correct. And, and I just bought six boxes of cereal. So, okay. So what I'm going to actually do, <clears throat> I am going to experiment with these other milks. Okay. Yeah. And they keep telling me try almond milk, try all these different milks. I still ain't figured out how they squeeze milk. Well, I like I whole milk. milk. I like whole milk. I'm going to tell you, I love creamy, creamy whole milk. And the only one that I have found that like really gives that same consistency mm. is the oat milk. Extra creamy, plain oat milk. And but it, is it sweet enough or is it no sweet? All sugar, you got all that sugar in the cereal. Oh, so you're saying no, it's not yeah. sweet. It's not it's, sweet it's, enough. It, it, tastes like, it tastes like milk. It tastes, it tastes like milk. Like, it tastes like milk. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna try those, y'all, because I, I do need the first thing I need to get rid of all dairy. You're absolutely yeah. right. I almost ate a whole uh pint of Ben and Jerry, uh Jerry Garcia last night. I feel terrible. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, and I just bought six boxes of cereal. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna get rid of the real milk, the whole milk, and I'm gonna just go get three types of milk. So I'm gonna get almond milk, and what's the one you said? Oh, oat milk, extra oat creamy. Milk. And there's a third one. You hear me? Extra creamy, Michael. Oh, there's a milk that's called extra creamy. No, oat it's oat, it, yeah, it's oat milk. And when you look on the container, it says extra creamy, but it's plain. It, it doesn't have any sugars, no colors, no nothing added to it. And the consistency and flavor it tastes I'm like I'm going to try it. I'm not a fear. I'm not a fear. Yeah. Well, we're out of time, but before we get out of here, we have a gentleman. It's his birthday. It's his 45th birthday. He has a spoken word poem for us. Uh, wait a minute. I got to tell people once again, please like. It's 81 of you. Man, if we looked up and had 81 likes, that would be fabulous. And since we're talking about numbers, last Monday, we we had been pushing, uh, uh, me and, and uh, Rosa May, thank you, Rosa May, we were trying to push to get 20,000 uh, subscribers by this Friday coming, but we got them by last Monday. Mm -hmm. By Wednesday, we had 22,000 uh, subscribers. Yeah. So the numbers are coming. Y'all are hitting those like buttons. Hit that like. Kapow! Hit that like button right now, and then... Log on to the morning show. I can go out with the morning show. Got as true as a day may go. Be patient, birthday boy. All I got to do is I got to hit today's announcements, and then I'm going to hit you. We're going to get out of here. Announcement, we already hit the light. My new album is out, as y'all already know. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Let Me Drop This On You, uh, and you can get it on all streaming platforms. Also, Friday. Uh, it will be our 400th show. It's a big celebration, a two-hour special. Please don't miss it. Tell all your friends. In fact, I want to encourage everybody to bring. It's the 400th show. I ain't going to make it hard on you. Everybody bring four people to the show on Friday. That's your, that's your assignment, Kyle, you clean. Bring four people. Even if they never watch the show, never want to watch the show, ain't never going to watch the show, say, please, on Friday, we need four people to represent for the 400 episodes. And if they don't love it, something wrong with them. Also, next week, I'll be in Orlando, Florida at the Improv for five shows. And the T-shirts are going on sale any minute now. Uh, the Woo Woo Woo. Hey. The Woo Woo T-shirt. The Mike Tide Morning Show T-shirt with the name all in the collar. And it's just really and it's good material. And ladies... Yeah. Fellas, let me tell you something. Get it for your lady and say, baby, I just want you to wear nothing but this and some fluffy white socks. Okay, anyway, with that said and done. Oh, last thing. That's that my favorite store, outfit. No that stop. black store also gave us these two books to give away. I'm giving away this week. This Ooh. one's called Maya Angelou, and it's just poems and, and readings by Maya Angelou. It's off the chain. That's going this week. We're giving away. And this one is black poetry called black roses That's so 
Uh, so we got a lot going on this week. And now, without further ado, this man's been very patient. It is his birthday. Let's bring the birthday man on for a little spoken word. His name is La Lamont Wilkins. <laughs> Lamont Wilkins in the house. What's going on? What's going on? Happy birthday. W's up. Woo, woo, woo. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Hey. Happy hey. birthday, dear Lamont oh. Wilkins. Hey. Happy hey. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday, 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 birthday to <laughs> you. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Speaking of birthdays, happy early birthday, Persian Black Queen on May 5th. So I want to get that out before. Yeah. Hey. So. Girl, girl, he be, girl, he be watching this show, too. He came on this morning and actually sang the theme song this morning. I heard him. I heard him just snapping everything. Oh my God. He a true fan. You a clan member. Hey, look out now. Boy, you got some movement. See, wow. Black Persian Queen, all of a sudden you got movement. Earlier, you like this. Not so scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I asked the spices there. I asked the, not the, the not the bad ones that Doctor the Prophet was talking about. The good ones. Okay, I'm out. All right. Look, the, the Prophet went and, and charged his phone up. Now he back. <laughs> now he ready. All right, brother. How are you, man? How you feel? Absolutely wonderful, man. Blessed. Absolutely blessed. You know. Couldn't Thank couldn't you. for a better better birthday gift here, man. Thank you so much in advance and again for having me on. It's greatly appreciated. Thank greatly. you for being here, man. Thank you for saying yes, yes brother. I know you got a wonderful <laughs> spoken word poem for us, so I'm gonna get out the way and let you do your thing. All Ladies right. and gentlemen, I give you Lamont Wilkins. What if I expected to appreciate the feeling I was supposed to have from reaching this milestone that never came? And what if I neglected to alleviate all the pain I wasn't supposed to feel inside from people who lied on me in vain and said, I'm the one who changed. See, I know what it's like to feel defeated. Hell, I know what it's like that despite whatever your dream is, you still feel like something's not quite right. Like, what's the meaning of this life and reaching these great heights when you still feel like you're being stepped on? On one hand, having haters wide awake in their haste, but you still feel like you're being slept on. Ridiculed by the look of your social media presence when you made sure to put your best on. Like, should I really be wallowing? Does it really mean I'm garbage if I don't have the following like your favorite artist? And what's the meaning of this life if even after all your achievements and being retweeted, going home that same evening and then questioning your very belief in what you're passionate about because people keep nagging and asking about when are you going to get paid? You've been writing all day dedicating your life for what you're writing for a dream that ain't paying the bills and probably never will knowing there's a good chance you'll never make it so you gotta know my love in hip-hop is in these flows so i don't have time to catch up on all those reality shows when my reality shows i'm steadily working hard behind the scenes trying to finance a dream that no one else seems to see except me see music and baseball are one and the same you gotta have consecutive hits if you want to play this game, nothing in this life, nothing in my life has ever been fair. So you got to believe me when I say I know what it's like because I've been there. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Yeah. Very nice. Very nice birthday, man. You did the doggone thing this morning. I'm so appreciative. Thank you. What are you going to do for yourself for your birthday today? You know what? You know, the plans that I had, I had to cancel to make sure I did this, you know. So I went to sleep oh, late man. early. It was, it was important for me to be on this show on your platform to meet you again. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't miss it. So, hey, Thank you. as a writer. I appreciate what you just said that you cancel some things to be here you know i just fell out with a person because they felt like they canceled something to be somewhere with me and that i canceled the being there it's really weird i had meetings they didn't land in a the time they were supposed to come so i had to keep it moving push it up the road bump the road like the one-legged man and they sent me a note don't don't plan to be somewhere with me unless it's in concrete I changed things in my life so I could be there. I'm like, first of all, you need to release your sphincter muscle. Just breathe, take good breath, <sighs> calm down. But if you make a change, that's your decision. You made that change, and I hope that you enjoyed why you made the change, that it worked out for you. Absolutely. 
You showed up, baby. Absolutely. And you showed out. And it's your birthday. And we're going to remember this for the next 45 years, player, because that was a great spoken word. It was. Tell Thank people you. how they can find you so they can get more of that deliciousness. So they get more of that. Um, so a few places. So I'm everywhere right now um, at WHPROSC. That's Instagram, YouTube. Okay. Where, uh, you know, all WH pros. You on everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Facebook, you can search my name. That's my personal page. My fan page is WHP as in Paul, R-O-S-E, and the number two. Same thing for TikTok. On all my social media, there's my link tree. This right here is my, my registered trademark. The purpose fixes everything. On mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you can tap the very first link to subscribe and key in your phone number. What's happening is I'm working with the vendor right now at AppSumo on the mobile app and once we've done all that and had the, the 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 website and everything all flowing together and i go through all the android and ios stuff i'm gonna be mm -hmm. sending push notifications so people will know where to get the merch when the site's up all that so you can also find me on internet movie database search my name lamont wilkins you know i did a few films there um wow. the domestic violence film the abuse where i met you at the oscars that was a part of that so you can definitely check me out there did I show our picture from the Oscars? Show it. Put that thing up. Oh, I thought I showed that man. I had it in. I had it in the flyer this morning that I posted. But uh, yeah. Show and that's that. why I met you at the, at the Academy Awards. We went to a party afterwards at the Beverly Hills. There we Hotel. go. Look at that. Yeah, 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 boy. I appreciate you, man. And then that's after all that time, you came back and said, "Let's do the show." And you back. came and you did the show, and I appreciate the sacrifice you made, King. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. We went we went Thank long. You. Tell the people goodbye. Oh, hit us with a woo woo. Do it again. Woo woo woo. Now do it like you mean. Woo woo woo. Woo woo woo. <laughs> it's Mike Kai Morning Show episode 396. We got four more shows before we do the big 400. Boom, boom, boom. I hope y'all join us for that. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be great. How you going to end your day, sweetheart? What you going to do, lovely? Yeah, you know, the kids are still home, so we probably hit a little matinee. Uh, I got one kid that wants oh, his hair nice. done. Finally, they don't want to wear their wild curls, so I get a chance to do his hair. So I would love to go to a movie with four kids. It's fun. That has got to be crazy. Do they talk during the movie and do all kind of make noise and stuff, or they just quietly watch? They watch. Oh, that ain't no fun. No, you. Uh -uh, my kids don't act rowdy. You, you want to see my kids act rowdy, you got to come to my house. They don't have like <laughs> <laughs> We don't play Bye, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, we see you tomorrow. Same time, same station, different shirt, hopefully. God is great no matter what people tell you. And let me tell you something else. Only one thing I ever learned from Robert Townsend, who I did my first movie with, Hollywood Shuffle. He taught me like mm -hmm. 25 years ago, don't let other people act out in your dream. Mm -hmm. Continue to live the life that you want to live. Stay positive no matter who's negative. No matter how people come at you, remember, they only doing what's going on within them. That's all you can ever do. It's what's when people are being loving and sharing and kind and beautiful, that's what's going on inside. When people are being angry and nasty, that's what's going on on their inside. And it don't even have nothing to do with you. So you just keep on bumping it up the road like the one-legged man with a smile and with joy and energy and light. And remember, God is great. I don't care what nobody told you. I got to go. Got a big day today. Woo! I got a life-changing meeting today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. At 12 o'clock, everybody, please hold me up in prayer at 12 o'clock Pacific time. That prayer, that thing will run an hour, and I'll probably have a really big announcement for y'all tomorrow. God is great. 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 Okay. Got to go. I'm going to get breakfast. I'm going to do You know what? You got to go take that black.